This week, I'm attempting to chase down some friends driving lightweight, rock-crawling Jeeps with my loaded-down, overland-built FJ. With almost no maps downloaded correctly and little cell reception, this is shaping up to be quite an adventure. I am looking for a place to sleep because it's just been a long day, long drive, and I'm ready to be done. So I'm not going to make it as far as I wanted to, but I'm not big into pushing into night driving. One thing about a tent like this is, especially with an aluminum one, it's going to conduct whatever the temperature is outside. So if it's cold outside, it's going to start radiating in. So whenever you're sleeping in cold climate, what you should do is like what I have. This is my Kafaru Wubi, which is like a synthetic insulation. I have that down against the mattress. And I actually have another version of this same blanket that I, I stitched myself. And I have it stuffed in the foot box because the bottom of this tent, there's a small space. So I have an extra blanket stuffed in that space just so I have an extra blanket. And also in this situation, it'll help kind of insulate the tent a little bit. In a tent like this, the mattress, even though it's a foam mattress, it isn't rated for super cold temperatures. So you're going to lose a lot of heat through the bedding. Generally speaking, an insulating layer underneath you doesn't do that much because you're compressing the insulation, but um, synthetic actually does pretty good. So it's one of these things that a lot of people don't know about sleeping bags. When you lay down on the down, down is being compressed, that no longer functions as insulation basically. Like it will to an extent, but the way down plumes work is they expand and they capture warm air inside of them. And so you create this insulating layer. But when you collapse that, it no longer works anyway. That's kind of a pro tip on insulation. I literally say every single time that I'm going to do hot coffee this time. I never want hot coffee. Even though it's probably 40 degrees out here, French toast or orange chocolate would be my options for hot. Maybe I do want hot coffee. I think I'm gonna do hot coffee. It's kind of a big deal for me. I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> French toast. We're doing French toast. French toast. Some cereal. It's time to get the fuck out of here. I've got my pocket rocket because my reactor is down because I did something stupid with it. My MSR reactor had a thermal valve protection thing and I blew it up because I tried to heat my thermocell pellets with it. Because my thermocell stopped working because I was at too high of an ele elevation. They are waiting on me, I think. Last night I pulled over with heavy eyes, thinking that it would be a short drive to find the group today and easier with daylight. But as it turns out, I still have about two hours to go. Because of the delay, I told the guys to go ahead and start the trail without me, and I would start it backwards and find them along the way. My maps were telling me to go to where they were it was another two and two hours and 45 minute drive. So I'm just on the trail and I'm expecting to run into them at some point. It's November 20th, so there's not many people out this direction. Short days this time of the year, but man, the lighting is pretty, especially with an overcast like this. I've been with these guys before and their Jeeps are pretty gnarly. 
and so they should be sailing through a lot of this. I had this in my head that I was going to a different place because I don't have that much experience down in this spot. So I didn't download the maps correctly and I've been without service. Trails Off-Road's actually saving me right now. With Trails Off-Road, you download an entire state of trails, which is pretty cool. Look how amazing this place is. This is a very cool area. I want to spend more time here. These guys have got to be coming around this corner soon. Found him. Very cool. And of course, it turns out that I'm on a different entrance to this trail. Expecting the Jeeps to come my way, after waiting about 15 minutes, I realized they turned somewhere just behind the rocks where I couldn't see them and they couldn't see me. Okay, so I found these guys and now I've got to kind of catch up with them. They're in Jeeps with much bigger tires than mine and much better suspensions than mine. And so they are in much less weight than me. And so they are rallying through here, trekking on. This might be the most incredible view of Utah I've ever seen. And that is the one that I was by that made it that far. But just look at this. This is incredible. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that. I'm bummed that this ends tomorrow already. This is super cool. Just an incredible, incredible view up here. Typically, I'd want to stop and just stay here for the night because we have everything we need. Wow, just look at this. GoPros don't pick up that kind of stuff that well. It's probably blown out. I'm not even entirely sure where I'm at. There are wild horses over here in this field stomping through. to finding these guys finally at almost five o'clock in the evening. I'm gonna be back here soon to explore more of this because this place is just incredible. There's just never enough time. But man, it sure is pretty out here. Knowing these guys, they probably got a really cool campsite too. I should be at camp in two minutes. The journey continues.
As the sun sets over the desert floor and the sandstone walls, I'm thinking about how this day didn't at all go according to plan, yet it was one of the most fun days I've ever had on the trail. I'm actually here to celebrate a buddy's birthday, so now it's time to enjoy the last few hours left in the day and do just that. Birthday boy Josh has a camp ritual of playing with glow sticks. This particular game serves no real goal, but it's fun to get everybody moving around in the freezing temperatures. Throw your glow stick at the pitcher's glow stick, and whoever is closest is pitching next. Playing around cactus in the night certainly adds strategy and depth to this game. The crew is showing me some pictographs that I fully intend on checking out tomorrow in the daylight. I gotta find a place for seven. You see the red sand? Yeah. That's yeah. what the other artists made up of. So oh. this was something. Totally. And then someone carved over it. As the temperature drops into the 20s, the group is ready to warm up for a few minutes and retreat to our sleeping bags. Right away today, most of these guys are heading out because some of them have been here for a week already. But I'm going to break off from the group and hang out for a while and go check out some of these pictographs that they showed me last night. They built sort of like a cattle enclosure to keep the cattle off of this because they've rubbed some of the um, paintings and stuff off the walls. So now they keep the cattle out, but you can get in here and look at stuff. Pretty cool to see this, even though it is pretty worn. So this is pretty cool right here. So we got a devil painted by the Native Americans and it's got his two horns. And it looks like this could have been like round, but the way it's fading, it makes it look like the arms right here are separate. And it's got two long legs and then it's got its tail. Seeing stuff like this makes you wonder why they were painting devils and stuff. So anyway, that's cool to see. Forest Service has surely been putting some time into this. It's in too good a shape. Usually stuff like this lasts a long time, but this is, uh, I think the roof has probably been redone. Still pretty incredible though. It's old. It's wild to think that somebody actually lived in here at one point in time. So I am downloading some maps to make sure that I know where I'm going because I'm going into Eagle Canyon and I'm kind of scouting it out for more of a long-term adventure in the future with the whole crew. I, this is one of those spots that I, I want to share this with my group. This is the first time I think I've done this. I've messed up and not downloaded everything I needed before I went. This area is called the ice box, and I don't know why that is, but right now it is cold, but it's also November. So this is where all the water comes from. In the spring, there's a big melt off, and that comes flowing down. It goes down under this tree root system, because that's all dug out, and then it goes out to that 
that little uh, chute that we saw earlier. Pretty interesting climbing up and down tree roots. It is truly amazing how much cool stuff is hiding out in the desert. There's so much stuff to see. I'm almost disappointed in myself that I haven't seen this until now. Because this is just a pretty accessible area for me. So I'm going to plan a big trip here. Utah is an incredible place to bring a four-wheel drive vehicle. Sure, you can spend a day rock crawling here if that's your thing, but for me, it's the expansive views, Native American art, and getting a sense of the Old West that keeps me coming back. That is Interstate 70 up there. I'm driving underneath it, and I don't know if I can get back 270 from here. I might have to go all the way back up the trail. I'm hoping not. So I'm gonna go branch off on part of this trail that I don't even know, but I'm so close to 70, I'm sure I have enough service to where I can get maps and stuff if I need it, but it's pretty awesome. It is cold down here for sure. It is, uh, I don't know. It's gotta be probably 30 degrees down here in this canyon. Eagle, Eagle Canyon, I believe it is. And uh, it's pretty nippy down here. And up there in the sun, it's probably 50 degrees. Pretty wild. So this is a little intimidating. That is I-70 right there. And uh, I've been following the trail from underneath it to try to get out of here. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna run into a dead end and I did not run into a dead end but I ran into this tunnel underpass that I gotta go through. And I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna fit. My antenna is all already, it gets stuck under my tent here a lot whenever it's bouncing around, so that's pretty good. But I might have to take the eyelets off to fit under there. It's gonna be close, I don't know how tall this is. And I've gotta go through two of them it looks like. So it's kind of cool, really. Okay, so an FJ Cruiser with a three inch, it's like two and a half inch lift, 33.7 inch tires, I think they are. Alu cab on top, the rails on top, and I fit through there, so that wasn't too bad. Okay, so since I made it through that, I'm pretty confident now I can get to the highway in pretty short order. I've seen the highway now for the better part of, I don't know, an hour but I haven't been able to get on it. So I'm hoping that this is my route in. Pavement. I have found the highway. So that was a pretty fun little area. I will for sure be coming back to this area of Utah because that was incredible. So much to explore, there's so much to find. There's so many awesome campsites and it's crazy how much access there is for just going out and doing stuff like that. All right guys, so thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Let me know what you guys think below.
As always, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and feel free to check out my other adventure, off-road, and overland-related content.